The Joy Business Van, empowered by Joy Business and supported by Busy, Great Things Happen, and Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. Sparks flying from hot metal, hammers ringing on iron plates, metal structures being constructed by cutting, bending, and assembling processes. This is Constance Swanica's world. Constance grew up in different parts of the continent. This diversity in her background strongly influenced her outlook on life and helped her appreciate art. When she returned to Ghana to continue her education, she decided to pursue art at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She opted for sculpture, one of the few women to do so in her time. So what we do also here is we play around with colour a lot. Uh, we play around with all sorts. Um, so now really maybe if you see railings outside, it will either come maybe in just standard black or white. Constance Swanica's journey as a sculptor and an artist started six months after she graduated from the university. She decided to open her business, accents and art at her mother's backyard with two welders. You know, when I started business, I started doing small decorative pieces, but in time mm -hmm. people started asking for a wide range of products mm -hmm. and I saw the possibility um, in the industry mm -hmm. and we sort of went all out and the more I explored and the more people requested for things, that's when it dawned on me that there was a demand for very creative world finished products. Constance started off with nothing. All she had was her passion for art and her acquired skill. She has over the years brought a lot of colour to the profession, which is usually regarded as a roadside job in Ghana. Her niche work can be found in a wide range of upscale homes, offices and diplomatic missions both home and abroad. What makes our work stand is the human feel and we always want our clients to have an emotional connection to the work. So if you look at what she's doing now that, you know, even though it's a metal piece, it's, you know, she's delicately hand painting um, the work. So you find that people now are not looking for mass produced things, they're looking for unique pieces, um, things that you can see that it's taking, you know, labor of love. Constance made an exhibition that Passage of Discovery in July 2011 marked a chapter in her life as an artist and a sculptor. Constance currently serves the top 10% of the population who are attracted to the quality of her products. One thing that I'll tell you if you want to make a mark in this industry is to pay attention to finish. Um, so that's one thing we don't compromise at all. So there's a lot of um, effort that goes into this department. That means using the right materials, using the right tools and even the, the quality of the staffing. People did not take Constance seriously when she started at first. She was a woman trying to enter a field that is dominated by men. It was very exhausting in the beginning, always having to fight, um, always having to do the point. It means that you doing work above standard. Once I was able to go over that, um, people don't see you as a woman or a male anymore. They just see you behind the company that does good work. Good work she has accomplished, and that tells on the number of awards she's received for her outstanding work, Constance has 40 workers now and she set up an art and design institute to train others, especially women, to be like her. So how has the industry progressed over time and what are the teething challenges? One of our biggest problems is that there's not much innovation, there's not much creativity, um, very poor quality work, um, low level of um, skill. Um, so if they don't understand all these things and for the local market it seems okay. You're, you're exporting things to, you know, first world countries. They understand that, you know, things have to be of a certain standard. And I think that's one thing we don't have, standards. So what's the future like for accents and art? Looking at the possibility of um, the very near future, how we can um, use a lot of mechanization and industrial welding to produce out these in volume and flood the timber market um, for people to be able to buy these flat pack pieces and then do self-install them at home. 